What is up guys and welcome back to the Med Bros channel and is it that time already? Is it already that time that I'm gonna be doing my residency first year review video? That is absolutely insane. And one way this year went by really slowly at the same time, it's already done. We're done with my first year, which is absolutely insane. Some of you guys might remember seeing my first vlog that I put up here. I went back and looked at it and it's so surreal to think that that was just this for year, this intern year that that vlog was put up and I've done a couple since then and now we're here at the residency review where I will be telling you guys the truth about how it went. So if you guys have been following along with the vlogs, you guys have gotten kind of a sense on how things have been going at different points in this year and they have gone differently very drastically differently depending on the time of year. So let's start right at the beginning when I had to move from Northern California to SoCal to start my residency program. Now, of course, starting out, compared to all the other transitions I've made in my life, which I vividly remember, I vividly remember going to kindergarten for the first time, I vividly remember going to middle school and high school. And because a lot of these times I was moving, it was brand new people, brand new scenario, always a little nerve wracking. Going to college was very interesting, moving out for the first time to UC Berkeley. And then starting medical school, I was definitely a bit nervous after the hype of how hard it was gonna be and was super relieved uh, to see that going well. So moving to residency might've been the most nervous transition I've ever had, considering that you're gonna go and be an actual doctor now. But while you are still in this training mode, you're really out there being a doctor, you're taking care of patients, you're talking to people, you have some onus on you. So starting off, my first rotation was a GI rotation, which was a pretty good way to get into it. I still had weekends. It was was kind of getting a feel for it. It was an elective, uh, getting for a feel for how to be a resident, how to talk like a resident, how to present patients. It was a pretty good way to start off actually. But right after that, following very quickly after was a inpatient hospital rotation where you, you really got straight into it. And where I'm at, we have three sites, just like a lot of other residency programs have. There's a VA site, there's a main medical center site. And then a lot of times there's like a county site. So I started off at the Big Daddy Medical Center. And the reason I say it's the Big Daddy Medical Center is it's pretty high profile stuff goes through here. This center is one of the main medical centers for this whole area and you see all sorts of crazy stuff, all sorts of rare conditions, all sorts of really sick patients. So when I got my first sign out, it was I think 10 to 12 patients, I forget how many I had. And I remember getting signed out the night before at like 7 p.m. and just each patient had 10 problems and all 10 were active and all these medications, some I'd never heard of were on board and it was uh, it was very overwhelming. So definitely while GI, I was like, like, oh, I can, I can do this, I'm getting used to this. I was really just smacked straight in the face in the beginning of this rotation and it was a bit of a wake up call and you had to do a lot of reading, a lot of catching up, a lot of staying on top of your patients. So I stayed up, I think the first night, like five, six hours just reading about these patients and reading their conditions and what I was gonna get into. And then the following day, presentations were a little iffy compared to how I would do them now. It was definitely a rough start. Everything was just a jumble, very overwhelming, uh, very scary time in the beginning there. But if you guys go back to the first vlog that I put up for this year, that was actually during that rotation and it was more toward the end of that rotation. You could see how much more relaxed I had become and how much more used to it I had become. I am far gone from that, from that kind of situation now. I'm much improved, but even back then, by the end of the rotation, I definitely got a hang of it. and. Uh, uh, felt a lot better about my skills. By the end of that first rotation, I've definitely felt far more comfortable than I did at the beginning on how to deal with a lot of these conditions and a lot of what was going on and what was important and how to tease through all the giant stacks of information on each patient and how to focus in on just what was important. As time went on, a lot of this kind of annoying stuff started to pop up. Stuff that I really wish we didn't have to deal with, but is just as important as the actual medicine aspect. And that's case workers, social uh, workers, you know, dealing with all these kind of logistical things, where a patient's gonna go after you're done treating them, all the paperwork, all these small little things, dealing with the family on, on things that are not very fun to deal with. So all of this stuff started to crop up and I also had to learn how to navigate through all of that. Find that while you're being overwhelmed with all this information and then dealing with all this logistical stuff, unfortunately, a lot of this stuff that you're fed on why you wanna be a doctor and how it's gonna be like is unfortunately not what it is really like, at least at this level and for the foreseeable level, even as I'm going to my senior year and I see some of these young attendings deal with it as well. The fun part of the fun part of kind of hanging out and learning about your patients, really connecting with them at an individual level, it's very difficult to do that. Especially when you're at a hospital like I am where it's one of the main centers, there's so many things going in and out and you really need beds open, you're in the middle of a global pandemic at the same time. Uh, a lot of stuff becomes getting patients 
patients in and out, learning the best you can and making sure things go smoothly, things go efficiently and at the same time keeping your patients the healthiest and you know taking the best care you can of them in given the situation. So much of your time is spent on what's going on, what is the next most efficient step to take, what do I need to get done logistically to make certain things happen, much rather than very detailed, meticulously getting to know your patients and doing all this in-depth stuff and optimizing their care. While you would love to do that and while that's probably you know what you've been fed on what you're going to be doing as a doctor, a lot of the times you really don't get down to the nitty gritty of things because there's so many things and so many just logistical stuff to take. And that also ties into the learning aspect. A lot of the stuff is learn as you go, learn about whatever condition you can while your patient's in front of you, pull up up to date and learn what you can right on the spot. I feel like I didn't learn as much as I really did in like, for example, a year of medical school. A year of medical school, what I got out of my first year or second year of medical school, the amount of information that I was learning, it was, it was just huge. I felt like I was definitely in terms of how smart I was and how much stuff that I actually knew. I think coming out of step one might have been the smartest I, I ever have been. And hopefully we'll get to there someday again. But right now it's more about what you're picking up and how you can navigate through the resources you're getting at a hospital and what are those resources can utilize to get your patient better rather than really learning about some of these conditions. And then that's gonna feed into the next thing of just not having much free time. It was a very, very busy year. There was probably the least amount of free time I've ever had. The one week of break that I did get, I had spent it moving from the apartment that I'd been at to this house that I'm in right now. And you guys can check out the house tour if you haven't checked it out already. But overall, that hasn't left a lot of breaks. I've been doing inpatient stuff since since December, January, February, uh, I had that neurology block, which ended up being inpatient instead of being like a more elective thing. So I didn't really have weekends. It was very busy. Uh, and then I was at the VA and then VA night. So like all this stuff in a row made that schedule very difficult. That is why you sporadically see us posting once in a while and then disappearing and then posting. There are so many things I wish to do with this YouTube channel. There are so many ideas just kind of sitting there that I really want to do and I could really take this channel off. I really appreciate you guys. I've been following us for a while. I really enjoy our content. Hit the like on the like button and subscribe. I really appreciate you guys and, uh, and know that we see you. And then continuing on after a bunch of inpatient months, there was the ICU, which was very, very difficult uh, in terms of scheduling time. Actually, the ICU work itself is not too bad. Everything you find is very algorithmic. Everything has a best next step to it. It really was the hours and the time I was putting in and the lack of breaks. I think the first, like I did like the first 12 or 13 days in a row of ICU, just the way our schedule worked out with no breaks. And it was very, very rough. Along with that, it was a time where there were so many COVID patients. Everybody was unfortunately kind of going down the same route when you got sick enough to be in the ICU, you were intubated, you wouldn't really get better, you'd be put on a higher level of medicines that kept your blood pressure and your all the stuff going and then it really wouldn't have a too good outcome. So we had a lot of patients dying on us as well. It was a tough time. Along with talking about patients, there were some amazing patients, I will tell you. There are some patients that are definitely going to stick with me forever, but the amount of patients that are going to stick with me forever and for a positive reason, I could probably count on my hand throughout this year versus the ones that are going to stick with me for negative reasons. Uh, there, let's just say there's quite a bit of them. <laughs> whether that be racist patients, whether that be patients of their own volition being rude or out of their volition due to their underlying medical condition being rude. Uh, it, regardless, it kind of added up to have uh, quite a bit of negative patient experiences more than, let's just say it was more than I expected as being a doctor probably should have expected it. I did get to do some pretty cool procedures, did get to work with some really cool attendings. Some of our attendings have been on some TV shows like The Doctors and things like that, and some of them have YouTube channels, so it was very interesting to meet them and, and get to interact with them, get to know them. I, I've overall had a very positive experience with the attendings here. I'll be at one attending. That's kind of where we're at, ending the intern year. Definitely one of the most interesting years of my life, definitely one of the most toughest years of my life. And overall, pretty excited to be done with my intern year, going on to my senior year. I cannot wait to see what that entails. I can't wait to have interns to have them work through this process and help them the best I can so that I can make some of the stuff that I went through that was tough a little easier. And aside from that, an overall rating I will give to my intern year would be a big fat C on the A to F. 
tier list. There were some great times, some great things, but very busy, very tough. A lot of things I would change in the way things are done. Very good balance of the positives and negatives. I think C is a very fair score. I mean, A would be, I would be ecstatic. I would wake up and go to work and I would love it. I'm not gonna ever feed you that crap. I tell it exactly how it is. And uh, that, that's not how it was for my residency year. It wasn't an F where I was miserable every single day, uh, but I think a C is a fair score. I was good amount miserable, good amount. I enjoyed what I did um, and learned learned a good amount. But uh, C is really middle of the line, standard, nothing amazing, nothing terribly depressing, uh, just a, a solid C. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening in on me rambling about how my intern year went. Thank you as always for tuning in to the MedBros channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if you haven't already. And I know 60 to 70% of you are just coming to watch the videos and haven't hit the subscribe button. If you're watching every time, might as well subscribe. I'll take a second right now. Could you just please scroll down there? Yep, yeah, the red button. Yeah, that one. Thanks, thank you. Oh, while you're down there, you can hit the like button, leave a comment. I will definitely read every single comment you guys put and try to respond to all of them. And we will see you guys in the next one. See ya.